This is question three, paper 2-2 from June 2020 exams from Cambridge International Education. There will be a card appearing up the top right of the screen and that will bring you to a playlist with all the other questions from this paper. And you can find a link to an image of this question in the description below and I recommend you try it before looking at my solution. In this question they give us this equation here, cosine of 3x plus 5 sine of y is equal to 3. And they tell us to find the gradient of the curve at this point. Now you're not going to be able to draw this curve yourself, but you can if you have access to it, especially if you're studying or something like that. You can go to a graphing um, website or use a graphing calculator yourself. I'll pop that onto the screen right now. As you can see, there's lots of waves and um, they've given us a distinct point though. So they're talking about one distinct point and we want to find the gradient at that point. And that point is here, pi over 9 um, is the x part, and the y part is pi over 6. Now, you don't need that picture. I just thought it's, a, it's interesting to see it. So, they're talking about gradients, and um, they've given us an equation. We're going to have to differentiate. But lots of students are afraid to differentiate this because it doesn't look normal. Let me draw a normal equation, or write a normal equation. y is equal to 3x plus 4. Students are happy to differentiate this. But let me show you what you're actually doing. You're differentiating the left, d dx. You're differentiating with respect to x, everything on the left. And then you're differentiating with respect to x, everything on the right. Now, on the right-hand side here, differentiating works a lot like multiply. So you can differentiate this one, and then differentiate this one. This is what the way you've been used to doing it, although you're not used to writing it this way. The reason I write it this way is because it's going to be useful for dealing with one like this. So let's keep the same idea, because in maths we're often able to do the same thing to both sides of an equation. Differentiate both sides. And we got something we wanted. In this case, we wanted dy dx. Um, in this case as well, we want dy dx. But it's not as easy to find. If we, we could take this apart so it looked like y equals, it'd be very difficult. And so here's the much easier way. Let's just differentiate the left and differentiate the right, just like we did here. So if I differentiate the left, I have two terms. I can do each of them separately. So uh, let me write it like this. Uh, d dx of cosine 3x plus d dx, that's differentiate with respect to x, um, a 5 sine y equals d dx 3. So that's everything on the left and everything on the right. So this we can differentiate. Uh, cosine 3x with respect to x, that's a normal enough one for us. The derivative of cosine is minus sine 3x, but we can't ignore the 3x in there. We have to use the chain rule, and if we differentiate 3x, we get 3 and multiply by it. All right, we differentiate this. Again, we're going to need the chain rule here because there's no x. So we'll pretend this y here is an x. So that's the first thing we'll do. We'll go 5 sine, oh, not sine. We're differentiating sine y. We're pretending sine y is sine x. So it's 5. The derivative of sine is cosine. But we're not allowed to quite do that. That's not the derivative of x. We've cheated a little. So we better differentiate what was in here. So we multiply this by, uh, let me put a bracket just to make sure um, it's clear, dy dx. It's not inside the cosine. It's I could write it in front if you wanted. Um, so that was just the chain rule there. I hope that's clear to everyone. It's actually very similar to this. We're not allowed to differentiate 3x, so we just pretended 3x was the same as x. We just pretended this was an x. And then we fixed our mistake by differentiating it. We pretended this was an x. We just differentiate as normal, and then we fixed our mistake using the chain rule. Okay, on the right-hand side, the derivative of 3, uh, as, as x changes, what happens to 3? Well, it doesn't change. So its derivative is zero. Okay, so now we've sort of got what we wanted. Just like over here, we get what we want. Let me write the answer to this, actually, while it's there. Uh, dy dx, we get dy dx. Here, we got dy dx. All we have to do is rearrange it now so it's on its own. So let's do that. Let's bring this guy over to the right. We get five cosine y dy dx. Um, let me just put that bracket in again, is equal to 0 plus this, 3 uh, sine 3x, and we divide both sides by this. So we get dy dx is equal to 3 sine um, 3x 
divided by 5 cosine y. So now we have a term for dy dx. It uh, was a little messier than before, but it wasn't impossible. A lot of these lines you might have even done in your head a bit. Uh, you would have might have got straight from this line down to this line. Perhaps. Uh, well, okay, sorry, this line to this line, this line straight to this one. Is, I think how I would do it. All right, so we have dy dx, but what they're looking for now is dy dx at this point. So at this point, x is equal to pi over 9. So we just put, instead of x, we put pi over 9. At this point, y is equal to pi over 6. So we just put um, pi over 6 instead of y. Let me rub this out so we have a bit more room. And we'll write this again with, instead of x and y, we'll put in the numbers we know exist at those points. So dy dx is, e well, another way to write this, just by the way, is dy dx at, you can write at if you want, um, at this point, pi over 9, pi over 6. Or you could write x equals pi over 9, y equals pi over 6. And you don't, need, you don't need to have had this. dy dx is equal to 3 times sine 3 times this. 3 times that is pi over 3. Um, I'm just multiplying 3 pi divided by 9 is 1 over 3. Um, pi over 3, sorry. And the bottom row gets 5 cosine pi over 6. Now, a calculator will do that for you. You can just go ahead, put that into a calculator. You'll get your answer. It's nice and easy. Um, or, we're, we were told certain values for sine and cosine. And these are two of the ones we're told. Um, so, you will be told. I'll have to check my notes, I think. 3 times um, sine pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. And um, 5 cosine this, so this is 60 degrees and this is 30 degrees. They're actually symmetrical to each other in pi and cosine, in sine and cosine. Um, but I wouldn't have known this straight away. I often look these numbers up or use a calculator. But that's actually the same number. Cosine uh, pi over 6 is the same as sine pi over 3. So they actually cancel and we're left with uh, 3 over 5. If you put this in on a calculator, you would have also got 3 over 5. You would have saved yourself a little work. I would say don't be afraid to use a calculator. It's fine. <laughs> Calculators are now good enough that we can use them in lots of occasions. Uh, but if it gives you decimal places, you might be a little worried, especially if it's the normal numbers like pi over pi over 2, pi, pi over 2, pi over 3, and um, pi over 4, pi over 6. The normal values should give you exact numbers like square root of 3 over 2. If it's a really bad calculator you have, that might give you decimal places instead, which uh, can be dangerous. Okay, so the answer to this question, is that the full answer? Yes, the gradient um, at this point here is equal to this. Um, I, won't, I won't bring up that graph I showed there to start, but if you, if you go to the website, uh, Demos, I think it's pronounced, it's a really good graphing website, there's plenty like it. Put in this into it and you'll see what the shape is and you can actually find where this point is and hopefully you'll find that it has a gradient of about three over three over five all right if that hopefully that answers every question and um, if you have any more though put them in the comments below and i'll do my best to get back to you thanks for watching and have a great day